So if a, a beer's name starts with the definite article, does that mean it's the definite beer? Well, let's find out. Today I'm drinking and enjoying Silver City Brewing's The Whole Cone Autumn Ale. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Chewing the Brew. This beer, just before I start gallivanting off on rabbit trails and such, this beer is very pretty. The head is far creamy, uh, tan colored than other beers uh, I've had recently, um, even darker amber ales. Considering the, I mean, this is kind of a golden orange, uh, almost red, uh, very amber beer color, maybe just to the light side of, of ambers. Considering the relatively light color of the beer, relative, uh, the head is far darker in color. Like, it's not quite getting to a real dark stout head color, but it's definitely creamy and more tan than other amber ales I've had recently or this year or beers of a similar color to this. Anyways, all that aside, um, yeah, the whole cone. So this is an autumn ale, which I don't know that autumn ale is an official style, more that it's a, um, maybe a, a, a theme, a thought, an idea. This beer says, indulge in the robust malty goodness of our autumn ale, boasting flavors, 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 yada, yada, yada. Um, yeah, so they're focused on a a whole cone, so they've used the whole cone in producing this beer, the, the hop, that the cone is the hop. I don't actually know how much of a cone, how much of the cone is used in in uh, other beers, or what part of the hop plant comprises the cone, whether they used a, um, a, a whole, uh, like more of the branch and stem and leaves, as opposed to simply just the hop. It does say a fresh, vibrant hop character from whole leaf cascade hops. So that's interesting to me that they're exploring using likely more of the plant to produce this. Uh, for being a, a beer that is advertising the hops, its IBUs are relatively low, relatively, at only 31. Very pedestrian there. But let's uh, dive in and see how it stands up. Hmm. Okay, so just a few minutes ago, I had the No Lie Porch Glow Amber, um, which is definitely uh, a maltier version of, a, of an amber ale. And just smelling this, there's brilliantly sweet and... Um, and floral notes going on that speak to a lot more hop presence. Mm, yeah, there's there's definitely maltiness in here. It feels to be it feels a, a sweeter malt um, rather than a, a roasty malt. The color would indicate that the malts have definitely been roasted, and indeed it does say these are uh, pale and then Maris Otter caramel and Carapils uh, malts. Um, so it's a mix of well, Pilsner, the Carapils, I'm assuming that's going to be a very light. Um, and then Maris Otter, and, Maris Otter and Caramel Malt, I believe, are a, a, a darker, a, a more moderately uh, roasted malt color, or character. Moderately roasted malt, period. That's really pleasant. That is very pleasant. I do not believe this is a fresh hop. It does say a fresh, vibrant hop character, but um, this was canned in late July, and that is far too early for any sort of hops, especially considering they are Cascade hops, which are uh, from, from Northwest, from uh, Yakima area, from Washington. Um, so these are definitely not going to be, this is not gonna be a fresh hop beer. These are gonna be hops that are harvested a year ago, that were kilned, and I'd imagine, considering that the majority of hops are kilned, ready to be used, their expectation of using the whole cone 
would indicate that they had to prepare for that in advance, <laughs> special orders and such. Um, so some planning likely went into this. Uh, what I'm picking up, picking up in the in the the taste is kind of a, a repeat of what it smells like, which is a great thing. There is that very nice vibrant uh, hop flavor, very juicy that comes in, and it's just it's beautiful. It's not bitter. It's it's juicy. It's not. I mean, it's not sweet. But it's not bitter. So where's the in between there? It's it's just juicy. It's it's really tasty. It's green. It's verdant without, um, you know, possibly floral without being uh, without the the harsh bitter bite or the pine tree. It's definitely not to the pine tree side of things at the outset. Then the the juiciness kind of fades, and you are left with a mild kind of West Coast IPA style bitter finish, um, but it's really mild. And it would be hard to characterize it as bitter because it's so mild. It's It just feels kind of dialed back in that regard. It's still floral and, and tasty and juicy all the way through. And then just kind of underneath it all, like holding it all together and supporting it very nicely, is a really smooth, slightly sweet malt character that that just kind of holds everything together um, very nicely, very nicely. This is interesting um, in comparison to the beer I just finished reviewing, the um, the No Lie Porch Glow Amber, because that being an amber, which I expect to balance maltiness and hoppiness, was so far to the malt side. There were hops there. They were definitely to the earthy, woody side, um, but they played a distant second fiddle to the maltiness. And this... Um, I mean, it, it's different, but in a way, it swings to the other side of things. There's still a maltiness and a hoppiness, but this is about celebrating that really beautiful, vibrant, verdant hoppiness without being West Coast IPA, punch yourself in the face kind of thing. If you are a, uh, a hazy fan, this might be a little bit thin for your taste. It, it doesn't approach hazy levels of tropical fruit aromas and such and that creaminess that you sometimes get with hazies. Instead, it remains an easy drinker, like the No Lie, but just to the, the other side, focusing on the hops in this really nice, tasty, and pleasant way. I picked this one up at Costco, and I have seen them still on the shelf last time I was there up here in the Northwest, Costco and Tumwater. Um, being Silver City, I expect it to be generally available at a lot of Costco's in the area and possibly at bottle shops. Um, I highly recommend if you're an IPA fan, if you're an Amber fan, if you aren't sure about hops, but aren't necessarily turned off by them. Like you, you can appreciate a good expression of hops while maybe eschewing the full-on, punchy-in-the-face, brush-your-mouth-with-pine-needle West Coast IPA. Um, this is definitely worth trying. And this is probably going to be one of my favorite beers of the fall uh, for uh, ability to get and the fact that it drinks so nicely without feeling like a summer beer, having that more enhanced, more that richer maltiness while still having that really nice balancing hoppiness. Um, I think this year for me is probably the year of the hops. I've come to accept that I do enjoy hops. No, I'm not becoming a hop head. That is not the only beer style I will drink or enjoy. I love my Pilsners. I love my, um, you know, my my lagers and and my stouts and my porters and all that kind of stuff. Just this year, I've kind of come to accept that I enjoy that West Coast. <laughs> I fully admit, I enjoy the West Coast IPA. Sue me. But, absent a West Coast IPA, this is good stuff. And so I'm going to finish it up. This is me, Matthew. I've been drinking and enjoying The Whole Cone by Silver City Brewing. I'll catch you all on the flip side. <laughs>